Hi, this is Paula J from Secure. Welcome to another episode of Secure Hacks Weekly. Uh, today we're going to be talking about SDDL, Security Definition Descriptive Language. So the way how we are able to describe gazillions of objects in Windows to set up permissions to them. I chose this subject because uh, SDDL is literally everywhere and you want it or not, it's going to hit you. And it's very useful, especially when you're about, for example, to specify permissions to services. And uh, when you go to services and you click properties um, on one of them, you don't see the security tab. That's exactly my point. But it doesn't mean that there are no permissions. They are there and we're going to learn how to configure them. Today, I will be showing uh, the way how we are able to change permissions on different, ty different types of objects in operating system and uh, what kind of tools are related to that. And let's begin. Okay, so you should see my screen right now and uh, what kind of situation um, we've got. So I am logged on over here as an administrator and here I'm logged on as Freddy Krueger. The case is that Freddy, even though we do want to do that, cannot stop PJ service. So access is denied. We've got over here the service, Bola service, it's running as a local system, it doesn't really matter. And this is a typical standard default situation where regular users cannot play with services. If you want though to make user to be uh, capable of doing so, uh, then you have to um, change it to either within the group policy or SDDL. The case with, with group policy is that even though you configure that uh, within the group policy a management calls also we can go to gpmc.msc we've got over here let's use this one maybe default domain policy edit if we go to policies and then we've got windows settings and then security settings and system services uh, we've got over here the possibility to define different types of services and as you see for me some of those are defined yeah, so that's the that's the status now, basically, whenever we are thinking about such, so I got here some configuration which we've got. Uh, so this is quite quite simple. Um, question is, of course, what about uh, Freddy? Yeah, so so how can we make Freddy uh, to be able to play with that uh, service? Well, we can add Freddy here, but the problem is that if you get into secpol.msc, so the local policy. Yeah, not every workstation is in the domain. Yeah, it could be. Um, and uh, how can we administer this one then? So if we get into security, so we've got uh, security settings. And then have a look here. We've got absolutely no uh, security uh, for the services or service configuration. So that can be only done through the domain policy. And even though you do this through the domain policy, I have actually opened the path over here, so secure.tech, syswell secure.tech policies. This is the identifier of the default domain policy, which you can find, by the way, by using the PowerShell CMD let get GPO, machine uh, Microsoft Windows and TSEC edit, and then we've got gp tmp.in file, and in the in file, which is a definition of our policy, you want or not, here you've got the definition of the particular service. So SDDL, you want it or not, it's always coming back. Yeah, so if you're going to get this policy, how do you know who can do what with the service? Hmm? So this is what we're going to learn today. Perfect. So uh, basically, whenever we want Freddy to be able to start and stop the service, uh, over here, uh, within the console, we're going to get, first of all, Freddy seed. There are so many ways, by the way, of doing this. You can use PowerShell uh, for get AD user. You can specify identity Freddy Krueger in this case, and then you're going to get the user seed. Or you can also use get um, PS get seed, where we're going to specify secure F Krueger. And then we get the seed. So I'm going to copy this seed because I'm going to need it for later. That's perfect. And then in order to be able to get SDL for the service, you do SC, SD show, PJ service, uh, and we're going to stream it to PJ service.txt. Now let's open PJ service.txt. And this is basically how the string looks like. Now we're going to do word wrapping. 
And over here you see quite an easy string, which is divided in two parts. Discretionary access control list, this is the one, and system access control list. So uh, here we're going to put our uh, statement that allow empty empty rp read property wp write property empty sections and then we are pasting the Freddy sid perfect now you are probably wondering why rp why wp answer to that question is quite simple rp stands for read property wp stands for write property uh, now what does what does this have to do with the services well basically um not much besides the fact that rp stands for starting the service and WP stands for stopping the service. I know that it doesn't have any reference to what it says, but that's the beauty of SDL. Uh, we have to learn them by heart because they can be applied uh, to uh, many different types of objects in operating systems. For example, uh, to very obvious uh, file systems, so files, folders, etc., even logs. So there are plenty of areas where we can apply that. But effectively, uh, this RP, WP and so on, so these blocks, they are um, predefined. So we kind of have to learn that. Uh, okay, so let's do this. Word wrap, control A, control C, and then let's apply the setting over here. So SC, SD, set, PJ service. So SD set this time, and then we are um, pasting the SDDL. Perfect, we've got a success. And then when we do net stop PJ service, that's the moment when whoever we specify in the SDDL string is capable of um, stopping the service. That is because of the WP parameter that we have over there. Over there. Now we can also start the service and that is because of the RP um, block or parameter that we had over there. Now when we get into, for example, PowerShell, uh, the same story applies. This is more for, um, if you're curious, uh, we're going to do this. Uh, just to clean the window and then we've got get um, ACL C windows and then we're gonna do FL for format list as I said you want to run that SDDL is always there and that SDDL defines us who has act access to the particular folder if you are searching for a little bit more explanation regarding this values uh, I would recommend uh, doing ICA CLS and reviewing the help because over here you've got written, explained just a little bit, not much, SDL for uh, for, for uh, file system. Yeah, so this is one of those um, places. Of course, uh, if you are seeking for much more details, uh, we you will find the link to interesting um, article or articles uh, within this blog post. Okay guys, so that's pretty much it. Uh, as you see, SDDL is not trivial, but as long as we know what that, what's that about uh, and how to decode it, we are able to use it smoothly. Uh, hopefully right now you will know how we're able to use this in practical environment and uh, how you are able at least to audit permissions on different types of objects. Uh, so so that's, we've got a pretty detailed uh, response that is uh, pretty easily parsable. And um, at the end, if you got some questions, uh, let me know. Uh, definitely post them in the comment section. Uh, if there was something that is not clear for you, let me know. And then I will do my best to answer your calls.